205 pounds. Guys, I can't remember the last time we talked about it. Can't remember off the top of my head the last time we talked about it. I just had an argument with somebody who follows the sport. I told them that Jamal Hill is a champion, and they argued with me and told me he's not. I said, wait, if Jamal's not the champion, who do you believe is? And they came up on a blank on that one, too. Moreover, I understood the, the point, which is what a small focus. Like, if I was to play a different game with you guys, I will start the piece like this. I was going to say, think of your three favorite fighters of all time. Go quiet. Now, you take a minute. Think of them. Then I would come back and say, all of you unanimously, somewhere in your top three, had a 205 pounder. All of you, when you discuss your favorite fighters ever, would have thrown a 205 pound in there somewhere. But if I was to ask you right now, name five 205 pounders that are active and on the roster, you probably have a hard time. Why is that? Why is that right there? Jamal Hill, I do not know, is in any kind of a talks or back and forth with anybody to be his next challenger. I don't know of it. I mean, for, for a while, 205, I mean, I, I can just take you back five or six months, but we had Blahovitz and Uncle Lyle. And these two were absolutely battling it out and Lionheart jumped in there. Now you got this three-way and who's going to be next? And there was just all this talk and there was just all this chatter. I don't hear anybody that's in contention to take on Jamal. As a matter of fact, I've heard from a number of people just today that Alex Pierre should move to 205 and take on Jamal. And I normally would push back on that and say, hey, they're not going to wake a guy up at 185 and move him to 205. He's going to have to do something. Time up here. He's going to have to do something before he gets in there with Jamal. He's not going to be able to come up, come up there and disrupt the current plans. And then it dawned on me, there aren't any. There aren't any by you, the fans. You're not asking so-and-so to fight Jamal. Jamal's not coming out and asking so-and-so to come in here and fight him. So-and-so's not suggesting that he be the guy that I'm scratching my ankle. Man, I must be missing that. That can't be true. That can't be true. That a perennial division like that would be left that unattended? Jan Blahovitz, who is the rightful number one contender anytime that you want to give it to him, but he is also 40 years old, is now talking about coming down to 185 pounds. I don't blame Jan for that. I like that. I'm just sharing for you. He would have a little more knowledge than we have. And whatever knowledge he has says, I'm not going to be the guy up here. So he pulled him out. Glover came off the table. Prohaska currently hurt. John Jones left the division. I mean, I could tell you a whole bunch of stories on guys that used to be there. I could even make you a very interesting piece on stories as to why those guys are no longer there. But I have a really hard time of making a case that involves a story between guys that currently are in that division. And it really is an interesting spot. I mean, if Piera moves up to 205 pounds, 205 pounds aren't going to call him out. Now, that's just fine for Piera. Piera never demanded Izzy. He never demanded to be a main event in a world title fight for millions of dollars at Madison Square Garden. These things happened to him. He came in the organization, kept his head down, knew that he'd beaten the reigning champion twice. He still kept his head down. He was willing to fight undercards, mid-level fights. He was turning down most interviews. But it's one of these things where he really wasn't looking for this grandeur and this attention. He does strike me as a very hard fight. I think that Jamal Hill has one objective, which is to keep that belt as long as possible, make the most money against the easiest opponent of all time. At all times. If he thinks that Pierre is a hard opponent, there's a good chance to knock him off his feet right now. If Jamal starts to see the wind blowing and they're going to bring this guy up into my division that I have a problem with, I think he's very good. If Jamal thinks that, Jamal might want him as an opponent. I'm just sharing the other side of the coin. Like There's a reason to speak up. Speak up for what you want. Speak up for what you don't want. Jamal Hill right now could come out and say, you're going to bring me a guy that just got knocked out at 185 pounds. He got knocked out by Adesanya. Adesanya came to my weight division and got ran out of it. I'm now the king of the division, and you want to bring me that guy's scraps? And right there, he could end the book. He, he could end the book. Pierre is now not coming into that. He's going to have to go and do something else. If Hill didn't want that fight. Now, if he does want the fight, it's a different story. Come on up, get some smell and stops, wake up, freshen up, eat a little bit, 205 pounds, and beat you up again. I can live with either one. I'm just reporting for you. I don't have either one. I don't have a single comment. I don't know where Prohaska's at with his injury. 
I mean, we, we were told this to the event that we moved on with the division. I don't think any of that was our business, but we got told it would seem like our business would be the recovery, the process, the physical training, how far you're out, what kind of mobility you got, where you at in your training, what are you doing to stay sharp while this heals? I just think those things would be very interesting. I hear some really good things about Prohaska. I've heard better things about Prohaska since he's found himself in this situation and left the championship, even left the sport for a little bit. King Mo, CB Dalloway, just by example, I had private conversations with these guys. They said, man, he's different. He's special. He's a special pace. You can't see it. You can, only, you can only feel it when you're in there with him. He has special angles. He's got a special grit. Made me a big Prohaska fan. I just don't know when Prohaska's coming back. And the last thing that I saw was put out by him on social media, and he said the shoulder's doing pretty good. But prior to that, I'm getting reports, right? This is right before they stripped him. He said that he vacated. You guys are really into the idea that he vacated, even though he didn't. It, it, whatever. But we were told that it was the worst shoulder injury that the, the doctors who looked at him had ever seen. So how do we go from the worst that you've ever seen to a couple months later, we're almost ready? Was he misdiagnosed in the first place? Now, I'm just asking these questions. I'm not asking them to be a jerk. I'm asking them because they're very meaningful pieces of a story to a very meaningful person within a division. And that story, like all the rest of them, are radio silent. Now, are they radio silent because that they just don't know what they're doing? That, that could be. Or they're out there telling stories and the stories suck and they, they just don't make it up the headlines far enough. Maybe they got to keep working, right? Babe Ruth struck out sometimes, right? They're not all home runs. You come out with an angle, you come out with a story, you come out with a plan, it backfires, you got to go get another one. I don't know anything about 205 pounds right now. And it's got, Jamal's number's got to be coming up. I mean, these dates are set. These venues are booked. It hasn't been announced to you, but they're still set. They're still going to happen. Who's the top contender at 205 pounds? Who do you want to be the top contender at 205 pounds? Should Piera move up to 205 pounds? If he does, does he go right into a world title fight? Prohaska, is he coming back? Was he misdiagnosed? Should we never have stripped him in the first place? I mean, these all seem like very relevant questions to me. And generally, for the amount of research I do and studying within the sport, I would have the answers. I would be the one to bring you the answers. But in a rare case, and this is the case, I don't know.